going to do like a visualization meditation. We're going to play a little game of true and false. And then we're going to discuss. Okay, fine. Cool. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to hold this because during my pregnancy, having, <laughs> um, I learned a lot just going through the process. And I also realized that I didn't know much about pregnancy and birth. And I was so disconnected from the whole thing. Um, and then having the birth and doing it naturally, I, I knew from the get-go that I wanted to do it naturally because I was already into holistic health and healing and veganism and fruitarianism and I, I know all about, of course, the medical system, so I knew I'm going to have it at home, but I didn't quite know what that looked like and I didn't know who I would need and what information I needed. Um, and then after the birth itself, I really just wanted to share this with so many people because only only about one or two percent of women birth at home naturally without drugs without c-section and it's so empowering to do it this way because any woman really can if you're able to get pregnant and able to carry a baby and conceive then you're able to birth your own baby in the way that nature intended um so yeah does anybody here know about their own pregnancy and birth when you were in the womb or when you were were birthed at all like and to what extent yeah. a little bit yeah. yeah that was like me too like when i got pregnant i was inspired to learn more about my own pregnancy mm -hmm. but also knowing what is the level of comfort with my own mom and not for her to not feel like i am judging too if she didn't do it enough way i knew that my brother was a c-section and that i was natural mm -hmm. but i was also the second baby in the room so if you have older siblings and your mom experienced a traumatic birth even if you were birth naturally you might also be receiving that subconscious messaging of your mom's fear okay mm -hmm. i had this traumatic birth at first and now i have another one is this going to happen again um so all of that um so a bit about the terminology there's so there's natural birth there's home birth and there's free birth so does anybody know about what these three things have in common and also what are the differences in them? Natural birth, home birth, and free birth. None of them in hospitals in drugs? Yeah. None of them involve drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A natural birth can be in the hospital though. Oh, okay. Because it's, you can birth naturally yeah. without drugs in the hospital. However, it's very unlikely because it's like you're having it right next to you and they're asking you, mm. you want it yet? You want it yet? Yeah. You seem like you're in pain. You want it yet? Sometimes yeah. they even give it to the woman without consent or without knowledge. Mm. So yes, you can have a natural birth in the hospital, but it's quite unlikely. Mm. Really? Um, it's it's rare that they have natural birth? It's yeah. quite rare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it's even worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and then there's home birth, which is obviously at home and it's typically natural. A lot of midwives don't do, don't ever do C-sections at home, um, nor does the woman mm -hmm. really want to do a C-section because mm -hmm. they, they're doing a home birth. Um, but free birth is what I did, and that means there are no medical professionals present. Um, this doesn't mean it's better or worse, but some people don't want a midwife because they believe that um, a lot of the midwives are trained in the medical sense, and they're also kind of giving that power away by saying, okay, this is my midwife, like she's the one that's mm -hmm. doing this for me. Mm -hmm. Instead of, okay, this is my own body and my own process and I'm doing this for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a medical emergency. It's a, it's a totally normal process that the woman's body goes through. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I would like to do a meditation visualization um, that we're going to have two scenarios. And I would like you to close your eyes and get in a comfortable position and take some deep breaths just to settle yourself and to really feel in this space. Um, and I wrote two scenarios and both of them are from the viewpoint and the position as the baby. And so during <coughs> these meditations you'll be envisioning yourself as the growing baby in the mom's womb. So the first one. Just follow along with your eyes closed and maintaining a steady breath. Uh, during pregnancy, you feel your mother is preoccupied and stressed about many things. 
including her relationship with your father, finances, and her changing body. She responds to this new transition by stress eating and following the doctor's guidelines for nutrient needs, eating plenty of dairy and red meat for iron and calcium, and giving in to cravings. You feel her tension each time she goes for a checkup at the local clinic, where doctors poke, prod, measure, and question her. She feels more like a patient than an active participant in this pregnancy. Later on, the day is finally here. Your mother goes into labor, and you can feel her stress rising. She gets into the car, which speeds off to the hospital, where she is rushed into a wheelchair, although she can walk, into a bright room filled with strangers and instruments. She can't see their faces because they're all wearing masks. She's placed laying down with her legs in stirrups wearing an unfamiliar gown. Your dad is told to wait outside. The doctors insist on C-section for unclear reasons, but your mom tells them she wants to continue the contractions before deciding. With no one to advocate for her, the doctors induce labor through intravenous drugs to get the process going fast. They do want to get home at a certain time in order to go to sleep. Being on her back, your mom is uncomfortable and given Pitocin for pain. Once your head is out, you hear the, hear the doctors yelling for your mom to push, push, push. Not one minute after coming out of the birth canal, your umbilical cord is clamped, a sudden and harsh final separation from your placenta, which is immediately discarded as waste, never to be seen again. A doctor whisks you off to wash you, weigh you, jab you, clove you, and put vitamin K in your eyes. You hear them say you have jaundice, so they continue the separation from your mother and put you in a box all alone for light therapy. No one responds to your cries, so you cry louder and louder until you fall asleep exhausted. When you are finally reunited with mom, you lay on her body exhausted. You try to get milk, but none comes. This is your first experience in this world. Is it a friendly place where you can expect love, abundance, and warmth, or a place where you need to be guarded and skeptical? So I'd like everyone to just sit a minute with those questions and feel the sensations in your body. And take a deep breath before we continue on to the next scenario, the next visualization. Upon the discovery of your pregnancy, your mom and dad are elated. They have been waiting for you for quite some time. You can feel the high emotions of gratitude rushing through your mom. Your mom takes initiative to de-stress, spending as much time in nature and eating tropical fruits as much as possible. You feel the rhythm of her steady breaths when she goes for walks and swims every day and meditates each night. You can vividly hear mom and dad talking and singing to you as you grow in the womb. You recognize their voices and come to prefer certain tunes. As you begin to kick, mom responds by rubbing her tummy and lovingly acknowledging your presence. As you reach the end of pregnancy, you feel mom start to settle down and relax. The weeks before you come out into the world, you hear mom and her birth team preparing for the details what food she would like to have on hand, what music, who she wishes to have present, and to what extent their help will be needed. The day has finally come. You're ready to make your way down the birth canal and feel mom changing postures often and flowing with the movements. Your dad and mom's best friend are softly saying affirmations to her. You are born in warm water covered in fragrant flowers not much different than the amniotic fluid you have been bathing in for nine months. What a freeing feeling, the ability to move your limbs and defy gravity for a few moments before coming to the surface. You are soon held by the arms of mom and stroked lovingly by dad, both admiring your beauty and perfection. Not yet ready for your first breath, your cord is remained intact as you're placed on mom's soft warm chest. You drink the colostrum and know intuitively that abundance will always be here. There is no lack of food, love, or touch. Soothing music and essential oils drift through the air and you know without a doubt you are loved and you belong. So 
Take another deep breath. Notice the sensations in your body. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to our circle. Um, so I'd like to do a little sharing now about how you felt during that and what, what differences you felt during the first scenario versus the second scenario. Really beautiful. I really like that conversation. It's very powerful. Um, I noticed right as like they told the father to leave the room, it was like a big no for me. Mm. It was like mm -hmm. the protector, the mm. person protecting the woman, and then there's mm -hmm. all these strangers with masks on, like, and it's just like feels, yeah, just really messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like mm -hmm. uncomfortable and like, like no wonder like the birth would be so challenging because you just don't feel comfortable at all. Mm -hmm. Like there's all these random people around you. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and you don't want to come out. Yeah, <laughs> it's making it even more painful for the mom. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it really changed my perspective on birth. Mm -hmm. oh, no, right. <laughs> Great. Of course, I was always cool. going to go with a natural birth, but that just like really made yeah. me feel the impact of like what mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. actually like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any insights or want to share? Where's everybody? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. Like that. No, it's okay. <laughs> we did a meditation and now we're sharing our thoughts. I started feeling into what it would be like to be like the mother. Mm. Like I definitely mm -hmm. felt the whole like womb and how it would be so much more loving and opening and you just want to, like you said, just want to slip out with the home birth. Or, yeah. Uh -huh. um, but for the mom it just felt like Oh, just like so creepy almost. Like I got mm. like shivers when you were saying like going into a room with all these instruments and like mm -hmm. masked people and it just made me, my body and my womb like seize up. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, I get goosebumps all the time <laughs> thinking about it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome. That's good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd come up because Tim, when I walk by him, he says, you ever thought about the trauma of your own birth? Uh-huh, yeah. And I thought, I never yeah. thought it that way. Yeah. So here I am. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Yeah, anybody that has been born is welcome because it's relevant to everybody. True. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be people that want to have kids. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Does anyone else want to share? Yeah. I felt so yeah, during the meditation, I was really like, I'm gonna visualize something and be like in the emotion, mm -hmm. and I was really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I'm happy that the second one was the last one. Yeah, yeah. I put that yeah. in order for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there was like such a game changer, even the feeling of abundance, mm -hmm. and there's no. Mm -hmm. The need to have not enough food and <coughs> love that really I felt something mm -hmm. in that moment because that was the issue like with my I, I don't know exactly with my birth but I don't know I felt like some it, it touched me somehow mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. I'm ready to dive into this yeah <laughs> yeah I still am just at the surface myself like um yeah. I want to remember my own birth and not like, yeah, yeah it's intense, for sure. Yeah. Anyone else before we go to the next? So for me it was the first time that somebody put me through a guided meditation in a kind of negative space and so f so <laughs> I kind of didn't let it really fully into me <laughs> yeah. uh, because I was like mm, I don't want no I don't uh -huh. want to take this energy into me mm -hmm. and I think it's it's two very powerful extremes no and the uh -huh. reality lies in the middle of that of course 
but obviously the, the second one is completely artificial, wrong, it's achieved like a, really like a horrible entry in the world and the other one seems like a much more comfortable, beautiful entry in the world. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing with that in my head too, like should I put them in this meditation that's actually <laughs> horror? Kind of a violent but entry, but okay. <laughs> what we've, most of us, honestly, if we were born in a hospital, have, uh -huh. have experienced that to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys want to share why? Anybody else? Or if not, it's really Yeah, fun. the second one obviously is like what I would envision living here in nature and like doing a natural, yeah, living in, mm -hmm. in line with the nature mm -hmm. design and like how the baby comes into a welcoming water yeah. and is welcomed into the world. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I didn't mean. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't know that um, the flight would be the water because it's like a more gentle mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, then it made me think too of like when I'm carrying the child to like just prioritize having fun and swimming in the, yeah. the water. Yeah, joy. Like, so that the mm -hmm. baby's first experience can be like so much fun and joyful thing yeah. so I'm doing that more. Yeah. yeah, they say it's almost like a second womb, like they're not really, they're born, but it's not so, it's not shocking yeah. to them, and they keep the, the temperature the same. That's what I never knew. Degrees that. in, in okay. the womb, so it's not like this harsh, okay, from water to air. Mm. It's like a smooth transition. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Can you, if I can say it, so yes, of course. I'm kind of shocked that from the natural, how did it happen, you guys? From the natural, mm -hmm. which we, obviously, it was always there. Then we became fearful, medicated in the hospital, doing yeah. letting yeah. other people control us that much. Like, how, where did it go wrong? <laughs> yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been that long, actually. It's yeah. been like for a hundred years or so that the doctors wanted the woman laying down. It was all male doctors that are changing these things, of course. They were, it was first midwives and who were women, and then the whole like witch hunting in Europe began, and so they were putting women down from all of these positions, and it became men, and they decided that they wanted the women laying down so that it was easier for them to get the, the baby out mm -hmm. and for them to see everything. Um, yeah, and again with the fear and the, the money as well, if they can get as many women in and, and get them to birth mm -hmm. quickly with the Pitocin and inducing the labor, then they can go home earlier. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're rushing women all of the time, like, mm -hmm. you're not right, like, okay, you're supposed to have the baby now, it's been eight hours, it's been, and labor can last anywhere between, I mean, some people say two hours, to, mine was about mm -hmm. eight to nine, and between eight and nine hours, some mm -hmm. people go from 24 to 36 hours in labor, mm -hmm. and so a lot of hospitals don't want to have a woman in the room for three days, because there are so many other people that they want to see, and they want to bill for mm -hmm. all of these things. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so now we'll do a true and false game. Sure. Right? We'll play. We'll do it one by one. So we'll take it. We'll read it, and then we will say if we believe it's true or false, and then we can discuss if there's anything else that comes up during it. Mm. Oh, I got my glasses. It's a first. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling ecstasy and love is more common than post pardon depression, CPD, CP, PPD, directly allowing, directly following a natural birth. You want me to read that again? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling ecstasy and love is more common than postpartum depression, PPD, directly following a natural birth. True. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. Can I read it? I think it's yeah. true. It's true. <laughs> it's true that when you have natural birth, you have natural ecstasy right after. Yeah, it's yeah, true. true. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Yeah. Huge misconception is that postpartum depression is just like a mm. given. Like I was also afraid of that. Mm. Like, oh, I'm just gonna like suddenly get depressed, even though I don't have depression or mm. things like that. But. Um, if you do have a natural birth without mm -hmm. any intervention with drugs, then your hormones are elevated in such a way that you're feeling like, high, literally right after, mm -hmm. like, and you don't even need sleep after the birth with her. 
I was like crying, like I felt like I'm like on something for two weeks. <laughs> I didn't need any sleep. I was crying with gratitude every day. Not like the whole day, but there was at least one time every day I was like just looking at her like so happy. And yeah, I mean obviously there's ups and downs and it's a huge transition, yeah. but um, the fear with postpartum depression, again, I think it's just like propaganda and yeah. <clears throat> Breast milk is specifically tailored to each baby as the baby communicates the nutrition needs to the mother each feeding. Wow. Yeah, I think so. That would be like the natural intelligence, no? Yes, but I yeah. also heard of babies being breastfed by other women, no? And that also mm -hmm. seems to work, but I guess it's for sure more beneficial nutritionally wise but especially emotionally and energetically to be yeah. breastfed by their own mother yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so there are definitely nurses that have breastfed babies that didn't have anybody and of course it's amazing for them uh -huh. um, the breast milk is tailored specifically to the baby's needs and during each feeding the baby's mouth like basically says what germs are there what bacteria like the, the immune responses like if she gets bit by a mosquito all of that stuff wow. is like happening amazing. so amazingly um, and yeah there are a lot of tribes that feed babies I had contact with that in Vilcabamba actually like when one of, a mother saw milk I was feeding her and then the other one there was milk and she was like oh you have so much you can feed my baby and I was almost like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I, it's a it's a different thing, you know, and it's like you you want to know what the other person is eating as well, and if they're clean and all of that stuff. But mm -hmm. I would say it's definitely better than most of the formula. Mm -hmm. all of the formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. That probably breeds more children of the tribe then, huh? when when everybody. Right. Yeah. And they're, they're having more having connections the with one person. Right. They're building trust with more. Yeah. 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 And you get a lot of the microbiome and immune mm -hmm. system, no? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. C-section has no effect on the mother's milk supply or the mother-child bond. False. Oh God, yeah, no, false. So yeah, usually women with C-sections, they're a lot less likely to breastfeed because again, they don't have the hormones going through. Like if you have the natural birth and your body knows, mm -hmm. I just birthed a baby and mm -hmm. it's reacting accordingly with the hormones, the C-section, they're basically just taking the baby out of you and your body doesn't really register like, I just gave birth. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of women are totally dry out of milk. Um, or some people, they, they don't, it's diet related as well. Um, or they don't have it and they don't believe they can get it back, they don't know the information that they can feed, that if they keep trying, the more that the baby feeds, the more their supply is going to go up. A lot of people don't have that information, but, yeah. Question. So, I, I heard a while ago that if some people, the doctors usually give C-sections if the umbilical cords wrap around the neck. Uh -huh. Is that even necessary? Because I've heard it isn't necessary. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can give a natural birth. You can give a home birth with the cord. There was someone in Zilkabanda as well that gave birth. Yeah. The, the wife gave birth to the baby that was three times around. They didn't have a midwife. It was a free birth, just the two of them, yeah. and he unwrapped it himself. Yeah. And again, that's a lot of like pressure to put on a man. But mm -hmm. if you have people that have had the experience with it, then inside then it her, can be done. inside her, he did that. No, when the baby came out. When it came out, yeah. it was wrapped around. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. when would it strangle? Only when it's baby is out, or? It depends, mm. and I, again, that, that there's a lot of factors to that too. Yeah. Mm. But the placenta is it really anchored in the womb of the woman, or would it just dislocate if the baby actually pulls like? The placenta can move around. Like sometimes it can be on the bottom of mm. the womb, on the top. Okay. And again, health, exercise, mm -hmm. diet, stress. Yeah. It's mm. all playing a part. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fewer than one-third of American women breastfeed until four years old, while pre- Oh, one-year-old. Until- <laughs> Oh, one-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And then, while pre-industrial societies continue until three to five years old. Without recommend- Who? Who? World Health Organization. World Health Organization. 
Yeah. Okay. World Health Organization recommends two years plus. Did you guys get that? No. <laughs> okay. Fewer than one third of American women bet breastfeed until one years old, while pre-industrial societies continue until three to five years of age. The World Health Organization recommends to breastfeed till two years plus. That is true. Yeah, that's true. It's true. And I'm guessing to breastfeed way more than two years. Though. It depends on the person. I believe in baby-led weaning, where the, it's like they what the baby them. wants. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are cutting it short for personal reasons, for work reasons, for aesthetic reasons, for so many different things. But yeah, a lot of tribes in Africa like it's until eight, even ten years. Which to me that sounds like too much, but I feel like at least a year or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the more that they're, the longer that they drink it, the longer they're getting the benefits with their immune system and the individual, this is the only food that's individually tailored to them. So, yeah. And logically, it might create more and more codependency also, in a way. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about the other side. Yeah, the I understand, that, yeah. yeah. Um, I've read about this too, and the fact that we're pushing kids to be independent before they can be, you mm -hmm. know, they are, they are literally dependent mm -hmm. on us, and yeah, some, I've heard of some people talking about, okay, if they think three is the time, and then they don't want them to be, mm -hmm. again, too dependent. I, I know a mother of but like eight or nine children, and I saw how she was breastfeeding the eight-year-old, and it looked really, uh -huh. <laughs> really kind of interesting, but also yeah. like a bit, like, oh, it's yeah, really I've <laughs> met, I've met people on both sides, yeah. for sure, yeah. yeah. And she yeah. just keeps it like the children can do it whenever they want, and uh -huh. they decide when uh, they stop, kind of, to just approach it like yeah. this. Yeah. So. And I know moms that kind of put limits on it too, like it's a certain age, and then they're like, okay, like just at night or just during this time, it's not like, okay, mm -hmm. whenever you want, I'm mm -hmm. available for you. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. So again, it's a personal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, I think um, the, the sooner the baby starts eating other stuff, the less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, and also like the more that they're given of other things too, the less they really need. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Ultrasounds overheat fetal cells and cause distress to the baby. Is that true? It's true. Yeah. I was gonna ask you about the ultrasound. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Is that the thing oh, they put on the belly yeah. to look uh -huh. this black and so white? Yeah. 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 yeah, I heard it's not good time. Um, yeah, so I did get an ultrasound in Vietnam mm -hmm. about, I, did, I didn't want to get it too early, I was pretty against it, and mm -hmm. then we decided, okay, let's see. The gender? Cause no, it check. was a total surprise, her gender. Oh. Um, and it was too early to know as well, it was around, it was after the first trimester. Um, but yeah, I noticed that she was moving a lot more, mm -hmm. like when they did that, and mm -hmm. like now I know it's from probably feeling the heat and being stressed out. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Some people like they want to see the position of the baby. If you do get one, I would say like the less the better. Some people are getting them literally every month, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, but also like a positive too, it can be that you're getting the picture, and that helps with the connection to the baby mm -hmm. because before. They don't kick until maybe five, six months, mm -hmm. and so I felt much more connected to her when she's kicking. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was like, "Do I really have a baby in there?" Mm -hmm. And then I see the picture, I'm like, "Wow!" Yeah. So it's again another personal thing. But mm -hmm. the more I started researching a lot, when I think my fourth, fifth month, more about there's a great book called Gentle Birth, Gentle Mothering, mm -hmm. and she talks about all of this in ultrasounds too, and mm -hmm. and also the more. Um, Modern ones that they would have in more developed countries are, are much more strong and have mm -hmm. more radiation mm -hmm. than other varieties. So yeah. there's different types of ultrasounds too, they're not all the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, but some women, another terminology is wild pregnancy, which is like connected to the free birth, and that means that they're not going to the doctor at all during the whole pregnancy. And they're not having any ultrasounds. So, yeah. Is that different than free birth? 
Yeah, that's the that's the um, pregnancy, um, and then birth is just the one mm -hmm. the one mm -hmm. day. Yeah, yeah. The trauma of birth is temporary, as the infant will soon forget. Mm, sounds like false. Yeah, you guys are good. <laughs> yeah, that's false. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people, that was again why so many of these practices came into place for like it was easier for them and more time efficient because they just assumed that this infant is like a blank slate and they're not conscious and they're not intelligent and they're going to forget this. But as research and just common sense shows, like they're a feeling being with emotions and that this is like imprinting cellularly this experience and subconsciously like their feelings and this is their, their initial view of the world. So, yeah. <laughs> Nothing is able to regulate a baby's sla slain? Oh. Skin. Ah, skin. <laughs> As skin temperature move efficiently mm -hmm. than a mother's skin. Skin to skin contact is necessary after birth to facilitate bonding, warmth, mm. trust and safety. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I knew that you need to do skin to skin for bonding, but just for the skin regulation, like mm -hmm. with as many blankets, even these heating things that they're using in the hospitals, like nothing can do it more efficiently mm -hmm. than just the mother. Mm. So, yeah, nature pretty much has <laughs> the father, the mother, yeah, but the father mm. can, okay. yeah, mm. like when he came from Vietnam, <laughs> we immediately like, no, was, like shirt off <laughs> with the baby to, because he uh, came yeah. two weeks after the birth, he wasn't able to get here in time with the visa issues and a lot. Mm -hmm. We sent all the way back to Vietnam, quarantined there for two weeks, wow. like it was really yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. So when he got there, of course. <laughs> like he wasn't there for the birth. No, yeah. so oh. he got here when she was two amazing. weeks old oh. and then I'm immediately really it was like skin to skin. <laughs> yeah, to know this is your dad. Because <laughs> <No, really. laughs> I was staying with a friend and her partner too and so I didn't want her to like imprint to the <laughs> other male figure that was there. <laughs> totally, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Breach babies and twins cannot safely be born at home. Breach means the uh, upside down, the uh, feet are coming up first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. False. 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 Yeah, they can be born at home. <laughs> they can? There are even women that do a free birth with twins. That I've heard podcasts on, and I was like, wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, back in the day, we yeah. didn't have any of that. Exactly. So it yeah. Just like, of course. You're like, swatting by a tree. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, interestingly, when we went to the Schwar community two days ago, I asked the woman, because it's, it's very remote, you know, and she had a baby about her age, and I said, where did she give birth? And she said, here. And I was like, wow, that's the first time I asked a woman in Ecuador that said, there, because in Vilcabamba, they go to Aloha. But then I, I said, what about the women in your community? Is it all at home? And she said, in the past, yeah, but 50-50 go to Guadalajara. 50 stay here. Mm -hmm. So imagining like having so much fear that you're getting on a boat, 30 minutes maybe in the pouring rain, waiting, getting in a bus or a taxi if you have the money, and then going an hour, or 30, 30 minutes to an hour to Guadalajara mm -hmm. into a foreign place that you're not familiar with mm -hmm. because of all of this and it's literally spreading all the way to the Amazon jungle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not the first. You know, these are pretty pink colors. <laughs> 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 like, I want this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all like, oh, She's like, no. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cheese. <laughs> More germs. <laughs> <laughs> Consuming the placenta after birth, raw or in the form <laughs> of <laughs> capsules, can help prevent postpartum depression for the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah. That sounds a bit false to me. Like I don't want to think about. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That sounds true. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I personally did not consume the placenta, but I'm pretty convinced. Like if we have another baby, then I would think I would because of all of the research that I've been reading about. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to even like a long-term vegetarian friend who ate her placenta and was like, wow. Like it's like this energy boost. Mm. Um, yeah, and a lot of women are doing this in, in the in the past. They were putting them in capsules, so I know people that have been put it in smoothies. Even. Mm. Yeah, wow. so I was just throwing that out there. When I first heard, I was like, no, you're not fruitarian. <laughs> <laughs> you're not <laughs> <laughs> the I don't know. I've never eaten it, yeah. but. All yeah, it's, it's all like it's, it's you know? very yeah, it's say, right or it's drinking ejaculation. Uh -huh. It's just like bodily fluids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's a lot of iron, and you lose iron during the birth of bleeding. So, but that's, that's it like after days after it disconnects yeah. naturally. Then Depending, so, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it takes days, not to dis disconnect naturally. Three to ten, yeah. Three to ten, which and not all so women good. do. Some people like. The medical field says delayed cord clamping is after five minutes, okay. mm. which is nothing to me, yeah, but yeah. it's a lot compared to a it's second, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm. So it so depends. You, I had a friend that did the full lotus birth where you don't cut the cord at all, and she consumed it because she had a midwife that knew which parts were mm -hmm. ready to take. Mm. Some of it disconnects <coughs> from the woman comes out before, so they might consume that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Or people do cord burning where they burn the cord when it's dried up, which I personally wouldn't do that, but I, you know, they wait longer than the typical. Mm. They might even wait a day or something, and it's apparently less traumatic than a cut. It's like a. Yeah. Do you know what the medical field does with the placenta? So there was a lot about that too, a lot of controversy mm -hmm. that they were selling parts of it mm -hmm. and using it for pharmaceuticals and medication, but I think now it's, it's less because information was coming out. Um, like I would say the best thing that they do with it is just discard it as like trash. And yeah. the worst thing is that they're selling it without women's consent and profiting off of it. Yeah. yeah. I heard that it's in skin creams and vaccines and other things. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say for sure. But uh -huh. yeah. I wouldn't doubt it, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, like, how did you do with the placenta and the cord and everything? I left hers on. I didn't want to cut it at all, even when it was dry. Like, it was totally dry, and I moved it, and she didn't react. So I, I felt if I cut it, she's not going to react, but I still felt mm -hmm. like I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I left it on, and it stayed for five days between four and five days. So you had to carry um, the placenta around? Yeah. I was in bed the whole time. Oh. I just got up to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. for like a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I put the placenta, my friend was helping me with this, and she was putting salt and lavender on That's it the whole time, yeah. um, mm -hmm. depending on where you're living and the herbs there. Um, the first day she put it in like a bowl like that like that middle bowl yeah. <laughs> next to me and every time I would pick up the baby I would have to pick up this too mm -hmm. so it was kind of a lot mm -hmm. um, and then the next day like she didn't want it to smell so she wrapped it in towels and then put it in a bag mm -hmm. yeah and left mm -hmm. it a hole for the mm -hmm. yeah and okay. then it came off like literally effortlessly mm -hmm. like she didn't, I was thinking is she gonna cry is she gonna react and she, one day she just moved like this and it came off mm -hmm. and it was like and I was also worried about her belly, like, is her belly button going to look different? Is this going to look like a, a lotus birth baby? <laughs> is she going to have this weird thing when she swims? Or, you know, and it was like totally clean. You can put coconut oil on so there's no infection because sometimes it gets like yellow right there and kind of yeah. sensitive. So you just put coconut oil and then... So you didn't even yeah. push it inside or something? It was just naturally. No, it came off and now it's like any. Oh, now I want to see your belly button. Belly button. <laughs> <laughs> but she's wearing a normal shirt, so I can easily <laughs> do it. Yeah, it's a perfect little belly button. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, and then we put it in the river. We were gonna plant a tree, but we were worried like. Some people told us that before there were pesticides in that place and we weren't even living there. Mm. Like, yeah. we were moving, it was a friend's place and it moved right after. Mm. So we ended up taking it and then, yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. It's important to get regular checkups and several ultrasounds during the pregnancy to make sure all is going smoothly. No, that's obviously Very not. Very tough. Yeah. What about regular checkups during the pregnancy to make sure everything is going smoothly? Is that false? Yeah. And that again is depending on the woman, the couple, the woman's level of comfort. Like if the woman feels that she that she wants to go for a checkup, there's nothing wrong with mm. that. But um, just the, the truth of it is that when you're going for regular checkups, you're reminded of everything that can go wrong. Mm. Like they're not celebrating you coming in there. Oh, you have a baby. Like, let's look like, let's measure you. And like, let's see how healthy you are. It's, mm. it's mostly like, okay, let's see the position is everything right. And it's, it's a hospital mm. is where you go if you're sick and they're trained to look for problems. So they're trying to look for problems. And a lot of the time you cannot even do anything about the problem. So if there is a deformity or a problem with the baby, there's literally nothing you can do. So it's best to just have positive attitude in my opinion and de-stress mm -hmm. and that's going to help so much more than freaking out about a potential that mm -hmm. might not even happen and then causing more stress during the pregnancy and the birth mm -hmm. and everything so yeah people have different opinions on that again but yeah I was I was talking to some friends during <coughs> pregnancy and I had one friend living in China as an English teacher and she was going in she didn't want a hospital birth, she wanted a, a natural birth, but she had to do it with a birth center. And in order to do that, she had to have checkups every month. And every time she would tell me, they're just, they're saying there's too much fluid in, they're saying that he's in the wrong position, they're saying this, they're saying that, and every time it was something new. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't get really any checkups. I went in twice in Vilcabamba at the natural birth center. And they're definitely more like, woman oriented and mother like family oriented and baby oriented but even that I felt was like they were talking about my diet and oh you're vegan and then I just mm. never went back mm. because it was a lot that they were putting on me and I mm. felt stressed afterwards mm. so did you take yeah. any supplements during the, the when I was in Vietnam I took a raw supplement mm -hmm. and chlorella mm -hmm. for iron but I honestly don't think they're that necessary. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, yeah, I just found that I was very much like, need to go buy all of these <laughs> nuts <laughs> <laughs> and greens and yeah. I, I yeah. remember there was a, a podcast with all the big vegan doctors, and I think they really recommended um, B12 and D3 yeah, and omega three and omegas, yeah. like chia seeds. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> I was definitely, yeah, I guess more conscious. I was eating so much fruit before, but I'm mm. adding more fat and mm. durian, <laughs> avocado, all yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard durian's amazing for babies. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for her to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So brave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's brave to go to the hospital. Oh. Mm. If you know the truth about mm. what they can do, <laughs> like, mm. yeah. yeah. I'll say pitocin. Pitocin. Pitocin, a drug to in, induce labor, is of, often administered without the knowledge or consent of the birthing mother and without disclosure of side effects. True. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So yeah. Wait, is pitocin? It's a it's a drug that they're putting in the veins, oh. um, and it's starting the labor going getting going faster. Mm. Like okay, if you've been in labor for five hours and your baby is still right here, that means the baby's not right. like the baby will come out eventually. That it's not just gonna stay in there. <laughs> yeah. And so they're giving pitocin. They will. I feel they usually will tell, but there's a lot of documentaries that they're giving it without even telling the mother until later or they're asking her and honestly when you're in labor you're not in any position to say like yes or no. like it, you should have someone there advocating for you that you already told before like i do not want this mm -hmm. be there and tell them because you might be in, you're in a different frame of mind you know mm -hmm. and even if they do give it they're not saying like mm -hmm. these are the potential side effects that could happen with breastfeeding with your baby with mm -hmm. all of this Mm. Yeah. That's why the man needs to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And that's probably another reason they don't 
mm -hmm. always have men allowed in the room mm -hmm. and that happened to my friend in China again like it was during COVID and so they said they needed to take COVID tests before the birth like imagine going into a hospital about to give birth and you have to take a COVID test mm -hmm. and they couldn't get the results in time so her partner was outside on a call with her <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah wow mm -hmm. crazy it's crazy mm -hmm. I have a side question. What fruit is that with the purple on it? Dolce Pepino. Dolce Pepino? Pepino Dolce. Pepino Dulce is a sweet yeah, but cucumber. It's it it just going to say cucumber family, but it's sweet. And the longer you mm. keep, it, keep it on, it gets mm. more yellow and sweeter. Mm. Mm. There's not much taste. You've been waiting for a while. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit like a tomato, no? Uh, more like a cantaloupe to me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cantaloupe, but, not sweet. but it's a fruit of it. It's a fruit, fruit. yeah. It's it tastes like a cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had it in um Kido? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, more than it. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Babies can lose up to twenty percent of their blood supply due to early cord clamping immediately following birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say true. It's not the trick, it's false because it's 30% of their blood. Uh, <laughs> oh. So they're losing like a ton of their blood and they kind of trick people by using terminology saying it's plus it's cord blood. Mm. But it's not cord blood, it's the baby's blood that hasn't gone into the baby yet. And then there's another thing that they do which is called placental blood banks that they convince the families to spend thousands of dollars to save this blood in the placenta because it's so healing and medicinal in case that the baby contracts a rare disease later in life which is like one percent chance and then they can they can take this blood from the bank so this blood is in the bank for like two decades that they're paying thousands of dollars for that the baby it would have been better in the baby for the lungs for the brain for everything <laughs> yeah so there's so many different things with this yeah the blood loss is through the belly button they're cutting it, and then it's not, it's not mm -hmm. going, the, oh. the blood from the present is not going okay. into the baby because they're not attached. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay. Co-sleeping is a leading cause of SIDS? SIDS is sudden SIDS. infant death. Oh, <laughs> co-sleeping co is a leading cause of SIDS sudden infant death and is the reason most new mothers are sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. Right, co sleeping is leading really cause. So sleeping with your yeah, baby yeah, in the same bed. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Can I <laughs> the idea is that you crush the baby cool. when you sleep next to it. Or, uh -huh. oh. mm -hmm. Suffocating or the pillows or yeah. But what means deprived? <laughs> like lack of sleep. Because sleeping is good. It's good. Sleep sleep so it's true. It is good. What? Okay. Uh, uh, deprived is like a lack of sleep. Like not getting enough sleep. Yeah. They're so tired. Okay. Because they're sleeping mm. with the baby. Oh, okay. They're always with the baby. All right. Mm -hmm. So we know oh, that the SIDS is false. But what about sleep deprived? Mm -hmm. Also false. So yeah. like the parents are sleep deprived or the baby? <laughs> the parents. Uh, from sleeping with the baby. Yeah. Uh, I would feel better yeah. right <coughs> next to uh -huh. the baby. Uh -huh. next yeah. to I guess the baby sleeps yeah. better when it sleeps next to the, be uh, the, the parents, no? Yeah. Oh, sure. the yeah. They're regulated. They go to work. If the parents uh -huh. have to go to work, there's no way they can uh -huh. just sleep. Mm. Right. Yeah, but it, it also, I was surprised to learn that the moms that get the most sleep are the ones sleeping with the babies because when the baby wakes up to feed, the baby's hungry, you literally just hold the baby and then put the baby down mm -hmm. and sleep rather than go hearing the baby monitor, going into the mm -hmm. other room, mm -hmm. coming back, not being able to sleep because you've already been up for more than 10 minutes and mm -hmm. then also worrying, what if the baby monitor doesn't work? And more? Like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But co-sleeping isn't safe, obviously, if you're like, consuming any drugs, alcohol, like you can, you're not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Which a lot of people do. No, so I know, it's I know, like I know. Alcohol age is kind of healthy. Be, be healthy. Until it's... I don't know. I would think like 
a bit older than even breastfeeding, but yeah. I don't have the experience yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do another workshop. I feel like I never want to do that. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. What do you never want what? To not sleep with my baby. Oh. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Okay. Maybe like five. I don't know. I don't want to say any number. Twenty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the next one is due dates are arbitrary and put pressure on women who go overdue. Only about 5% of women actually give birth on the due date. Mm. Uh, yeah, true. sounds true. 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 Yeah. Guys have 100% support. <laughs> yeah, only 5% of women give birth on the due date. And a lot of first babies, like the first baby usually stays in for longer, especially if you're getting enough nutrition because the baby knows the baby's getting enough. A lot of premature babies, it's a lack of nutrition and the baby is birthing in order to drink the milk, to be fed, like all of these, and stress too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most babies are not born on the due date and when, like a lot of the times yeah. if you're involved with the hospital and you go a day over, they're like, where are you? Um, and like, where's the baby? Like the baby's gonna come! <laughs> like, it's, yeah. yeah, and so it, it puts a lot of pressure and there are also midwives that are are involved legally with the state and they legally cannot attend your birth if you go past a certain date in some areas. Yeah, so it's so like you're with this midwife for months and you think she's going to be at your birth and then she tells you you're past your due date, I can't because it's a risk. Yeah. Not a risk. It's just normal. Yeah. And yeah, some people don't know the exact date of conception too, so it's kind of like it's gray area. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's a couple more. I think there was 20 in there. So, two for everybody. Okay, I don't know this web. Uh, jaundice. Jaundice. Jaundice is typical and usually goes away on its own without medical intervention. What is it? Liver, isn't it? It's like a yellow... Yeah, they turn kind of yellowy uh -huh. green. It's a yellow baby. Yeah. Oh. With yellow skin. But it's that does go away. Yeah. That does go away on its own, I believe. Yeah. What, what is it? It does. It is it's typical and usually goes away on its own without medical intervention. I would say sure. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. I thought this was tricky, guys. <laughs> I was under the different impression that John was because I used to work as a social worker and I had to write reports and almost every baby said he had, it was a normal birth, but he had jaundice and I was like, that doesn't sound normal. And he got light therapy, so that means they take the baby away and they put them in a box with eight lights, essentially, but mm -hmm. it would go away on its own sometimes in like a couple days. Right. Mm -hmm. Going on for a little, like, yeah. They were, you can't go in the sun with the newborn, but you can just go a little bit in the sun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, it's usually because of liver and diet, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that hypothetical? Yeah. Some skinny one. Little one there. <laughs> okay. Babies born in the hospital. 98% of births have their cord out before cord cut. cut before between 30 to 60 seconds. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Sure. Right away? Yeah. 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 And they cut it before the placenta is birthed. So typically the woman would give birth and then between like under an hour the placenta is going to come out. But Usually in the hospital, the baby comes out and then they cut it for really right away mm -hmm. before the placenta even comes out. Or they might even take the placenta out itself. Mm -hmm. Or they take the baby out with forceps sometimes. Mm -hmm. So all of these different unnecessary interventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. May I ask if you don't have to answer, but any of us here was born differently than in the hospital? We are all kind of. 
Cut. I'm curious to ask my mom about all the details that she oh, knows, yeah. like yeah. when was yeah. the cord cut or... I know, I was like, after this I'm going to go text mom yeah. and be like, yeah. how was my birthday? Yeah. <laughs> I can just warn you, it's a tricky thing to, you know, if you know what all the stuff that can go wrong, you know, if you, not to come with a kind of, and like she said, not, not to come with the energy yeah, of like, like oh, you did this wrong but... and like... A <laughs> Yeah. We're just curious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not like what, how mom, was my mom. birth? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was for me also quite a journey to come back and try to fish more information out about the birth. My mother feeling more and more like, right. you know, no, it was everything right and it was easy. No, it isn't. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Child Protective Services always prioritize the newborn's best interest. Well, that's obviously not really true. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What Child Protective Services? Yeah. What, yeah. Read it again. What's that? Child, it's protect child uh, Protective Services always prioritize the newborn's best interest. Some kind of organization that they have in I don't know if in Canada also in the US I don't know if they do. I'm sure, yeah. In the US they have this. They must. Yeah, I used to work for them actually, so I had experience mm -hmm. like seeing all of the craziness and you know, there's a lot to that. Yeah, I was there when some of the people had to take the kids away. Like I was an intern and now now I'm like on the other side and it's like I met a child protective service worker in Vilcabamba and I was like careful of what I told her just about my lifestyle because it's like they there's cases that they take babies for being born and with holistic families that are eating yeah. vegan or like all of these in Ecuador things. also no oh. I don't think that's why we're here <laughs> there was, um, I don't think yeah like they don't have this thing in Vietnam or Asia because the culture like people are just gonna help each other in the family rather than having to call like some external government official. There's one guy from, um, where was it, Norway, and he's contacting, he wants to come here and he actually had to fight in the courts with, for his kids to be, because they were, he was vegan, he wanted to feed them like fruit or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, they got reported or something like that, mm -hmm. so he wants to come to Ecuador, he's not sure which community yet, he's uh, checking out all of them here. But uh, he, he yeah. I think he finally won, and now he's like ready to leave, kind of, almost. Wow. Maybe. Yeah. So that was a. Oh. It's intense. Mm -hmm. They can call on like a lot of things, and some of that isn't even true. Like some family member, like I had a friend that family member didn't agree with their lifestyle, and she got mm -hmm. called. Snitched she was her. doing homeschooling, and so they came mm -hmm. over. They investigated, and then they decided, okay, no, like there's no issue here. But mm -hmm. it depends on what worker you get. And, all mm -hmm. of that. Dr. Yeah. Moss talked about that also, that some states really did just take the children away kind of. Like yeah. Really crazy. Yeah. Like my experience, it was quite mm -hmm. serious when they took them away. Like it was like the parents were using heroin or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. So birth can be <laughs> pleasurable and fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just did a course when we talked about that. I've, I've met a, a mother that had an orgasmic birth and it was very inspiring to, to hear that. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, it was a very powerful moment. <laughs> wow. Yeah. She's in Germany? No, it was in the Rainbow Garden oh in, in Portugal. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she, she yeah, said it now that she did it, so it was like I could just. Uh -huh. Hey! Mm -hmm. Birth can you fun love your make love? <laughs> make love. Birth can be like making make love. love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aesthetic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also there, there was another. Aesthetic, and aesthetic, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was another couple I talked to, and they they had already two children in a kind of normal way, and then they became more conscious, and then they mm -hmm. were watching more their food and the, the, the ways of bursting, mm -hmm. and they were both saying like. The more experience, I think they had five children at the end, so they got more and more experience and more and more home births and all of that. But they were saying, you know, the, the more you do it, the more you allow yourself and the confidence you have, the more ecstatic it became. Really, it was like a mystical, deep spiritual experience for the father, for the mother, for the for the children that they had the choice if they want to be part of it. You know? So the children were also there, 
and it was just like they said it was like a, like a psychedelic experience like a transcendental mm -hmm. like there's new life coming into this planet yeah. and we're witnessing it all together it's like what the fuck you know mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Too, if they're feeding on one side, like they're gonna get to the back hind mouth, which is more fat, rather than like switching them constantly. They're super flexible, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Baby's hips are just like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they want the drums. It's a celebration. Was that all of them? Oh, there's there's one more. Okay. One more. Did you read yours, yeah. Michael? Oh yes, yeah, you did. Yeah, did, right? yeah I did. The brass one. <laughs> Okay. I thought I read this one already because it, it, it starts the same. But over one third of U.S. babies are born by C-section, and most of the time, the procedure is necessary plus life life saving. False. 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 Okay, you guys got them one hundred percent. Yeah. Were Were any of them surprising to anyone, or do you have questions about these, or that you? Considering we've been lied to most of our lives, yeah. we're all pretty common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. The breast milk one was cool. I didn't mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to learn about this. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the, the the sooner we go back, or like the, the closer we get to the young, you know, the younger that we can mm -hmm prevent all of this stuff. It's all about prevention as we know with diet, like instead of treating disease, we change our diet and we don't ever get it. Like as, instead of going, like trying to take the trauma away, preventing it mm -hmm. sooner than later. It's not even about childhood trauma, it's about birth trauma and pregnancy and even conscious conception and all of that, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to also just have like an open question time, and if you want, I can share too about how I prepared, yeah. if that's of interest. I would love to hear your I story. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, I can talk about how I prepared a bit. And can, um, you cover in that, can you cover how it does work when a woman gets pregnant somewhere in the country, nobody knows, because mm -hmm. she's doing it on her own with her mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. and the baby gets born, uh -huh. we don't have to get the name, or we don't have to give examples, we don't yeah. have to connect to the government. The system, yeah. So have, if you can cover your, maybe, you Yeah, sure, mind. sure. Mm -hmm. As much as I can. Yeah. I'm not a good feel uh, comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, to prepare. I was quite focused on my nutrition and researching like exactly what I needed, but I think more than anything, um, low stress and trust and confidence is the biggest thing. Um, 
more so than preparing like with physical things like oh I need a tub and lavender and salt it was more mentally like I had a lot of things coming up I felt pretty confident for the first two semesters like I felt amazing I didn't throw up one time I didn't have any pain or discomfort I was still riding bikes or many things like that nothing like too extreme um, but I felt when yeah when I when I started getting bigger like seven and a half eight months is I'm like okay like this is about to come and when I would get up in the middle of the night to pee, like, I was like, wow, like, this is coming soon. Mm -hmm. And I felt all of these things that were programmed that I didn't think were a big deal um, were coming into my consciousness. And so um, I started meditating a lot more, like, distancing myself from technology and social media, which I wasn't really using, like, a ton, but I, I pretty much was living, like, without electricity, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. for the two weeks before the birth and then after. Um, I was meditating just to get my breath right and my mind right. Um, I would really recommend the tool called hypnobirthing, which is on YouTube and it's free, like in any language pretty much, that is like guided meditation for when you're pregnant. And it can be like in the first trimester, second, third, before birth. And it's pretty much just giving you affirmations of like, I'm able to do this, like my body and my baby are a team, I'm able to create this baby, I'm able to birth this baby naturally. Um, like I was doing that pretty much every night for maybe a half hour to an hour and I felt like this was really helping me a lot. Um, also I prepared by connecting with other women, like I felt that gave me the most confidence is to meet real women that gave birth naturally. and. Uh, I had that in Bokabanda, like I was just able to be around people and ask them questions and and get that connection and I felt that was the biggest thing for me. Um, and also learning about free birth and they have free podcasts too that women are sharing their story and um, I felt okay if these women can do it I can do it too and it was just like really upping my confidence for this whole thing. Um, and also for practical things for preparing for the birth, um, obviously, like, if you're going to use cotton diapers, which I would recommend, like, having those ready, a lot of towels, a lot of things, people that you know, that you can trust, and that are giving their confidence in you, too, and that aren't going to be, like, intervening or trying to save you, or things like that, um, the foods that you want, candles, like different smells maybe, like you can also use that in bringing pleasure into your birth, okay the smell is giving you pleasure, you can you can use it like this reminded me of something and then you can use it during your birth and it's going, so using all of your five senses during this, um, whether it be sound, music you like, um, touch too, um, being with your partner during this time and becoming close and that's releasing more oxytocin as well. Um, yeah, the podcast helped a lot. I was just like laying in my hammock every day listening to these podcasts for an hour and thinking like getting excited for the birth actually because it's a lot of people just want to get it over with and they don't want to be conscious and they just want the baby out and then they can like start bonding with the baby but actually it's something that you can be excited for and just like it's an experience that you're never going to have well you could have many like not many times yeah. but a few times but it, every time is new and it's like yeah it's it's very transformational um and the birth itself she was born on the 15th of december i thought my due date was the 22nd and so i wasn't expecting her and that's why i felt like it was it was actually a good thing because I wasn't like, okay, today is the day. Mm -hmm. I just thought it's a normal day. And then when the contractions started, I thought that they were fake, the Braxton Hicks, which mm -hmm. happens like just, they're not real contractions, mm -hmm. they're just the body. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm not giving birth right now. Like I have a week. I, I, I knew mm -hmm. for sure it's going to be on the 22nd. I just mm -hmm. had this in my mind and he was flying to Peru on the 22nd. I was like, maybe he's going to get here in time and all of these things. Um, so I was going through the contractions and then that was about five hours and then I, I felt this is getting like quite intense to be just mm. <laughs> the fake contraction, it's been a long time. Mm. So 
so I walked into my friend's house because we were living like this is my little house, this is their little house, and they're kind of connected. Mm. And so I walked in and I was like, I think I'm going to give birth. Mm. And then they just kind of like placed their hand, like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah, calm me down. And then, yeah, the mucus plug comes out, so there's some blood. And then my water broke at midnight, and I was like, okay, that's when I knew I'm giving birth. Like, before that, I didn't really. I was like, maybe not. And then the water broke, and I was like, wow, this is not <laughs> real. Yeah. Um, and the contractions were getting more intense, but I was able to sleep in between them, even though, like, it was just for a few minutes. So I would have contractions like this, and then I would go on my side, like, quite exhausted to sleep. Um, yeah, that was at night, so they started at, like, 8. 7, 8 p.m., which is about the time that I was usually going to bed up there because we didn't have electricity, so it was getting dark. I would put on a candle, meditate, and that night, like, as I was getting ready for bed, that's when the contraction started. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the water broke, more contractions. I wanted to go outside. I just wanted to move, but I didn't really feel like moving. So a lot of women, sometimes they go for a walk during labor. Sometimes they take a shower. I did not feel like doing any of this. I didn't feel like eating anything. I didn't feel like talking. I wanted silence. <laughs> and, um, but I just said, I want to move outside. I think I just said outside. <laughs> and then I, I used the hammock to kind of help me with my contractions and to push. And then... Yeah, the baby came. She came at 4.32 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I turned around. The placenta was still attached. And, I, like, I fed her pretty much immediately. And then we went back inside for skin-to-skin -skin contact <coughs> and to wait for the placenta to be born, which took, like, an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt a little bit rushed during this time because I think my friend, she already had two babies, so like hers were shorter. Mm -hmm. Like the whole time she was really great, very like, just like telling me, okay, expand, you can do this. And then um, at the end they were like, kind of like, okay, I think you need to try to like get this out. And I was like, just let me relax. <laughs> like it'll come out. And I honestly think now that I'm researching more about it, if you're exhausted, then it's going to take more time. And I think that day I didn't have enough to eat, like we were living quite far, um, I think I didn't have enough energy that day, and so that's why it took me a little bit longer, um, and then I felt after the birth, I kind of bounced back to normal, like, besides the high emotions, I felt a lot, but I felt, um, I had a lot of energy within, like, two weeks, I felt like I can go back to my normal life. And then a little bit after that, I was like, actually, I need to just rest and recuperate and take care of my body because I think I thought, okay, I'm like mostly raw and um, healthy, so I don't need to listen to this other advice about staying inside. But I do believe that it's important to, to let your body recover because you've been going through changes for nine months and then mm -hmm. like, you don't need just two weeks. You need more time than that. Um, but yeah, it's been like a really beautiful experience and like a lot of changes and watching another human being grow from like six pounds to 30 something pounds is crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, with the, your question, um, so we did the home birth, which is very like accepted here in Ecuador legally. Um, and you can easily get residency with the home birth. So she is like automatically a citizen here. Like they see her as an Ecuadorian. Um, I didn't get a social security number for her in the States. Um, I decided against that and putting her in the system there. But for us to get residency, like I wanted her to have a schedule and to be able to travel. Um, they didn't really ask too many questions at the the registry, like they just need um, two witnesses there, so that's it, to answer some questions, okay, what time was she born, what was she born? where do you live, and okay, there, here you go, here's your birth certificate, then when you have your birth certificate, you can go into the cedula and the passport and all of that, so mm -hmm. it was pretty simple, and they don't ask about vaccinations or anything. Did they take a blood sample? No, no, no. So she's never been to. She's never had any vaccines at all, right? Eh? 
no. nothing good. No. Mm -hmm. And I prefer that also yeah. to just stay here as well. Yeah. You've never been in the hospital with, with vaccines. She's never seen a doctor. Yeah. That too would like down. <laughs> Even like natural people, I'm like, oh. Because, yeah. Yeah, she's never seen anyone because she's healthy, so. Yeah. I heard from Robert yeah. that they didn't even see his baby he just went and told them or no no that was someone else actually in the u.s they never saw the baby they just told them and they were like okay oh at the to get the the birth certificate uh -huh. wow <laughs> oh, that's cool. no they it's need the baby there oh, okay. yeah well, maybe that's just for the passport go. i don't know oh. it might not <laughs> yeah someone was saying that for another friend hey you could borrow her <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah a little bit just about my own experience if anyone has questions or like, you know, I have a question yeah. you, you mentioned conch, uh, how did you say it? conscious conception like, did yeah. you already have the idea to have a baby at that point no okay. it was a surprise yeah. okay. uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but there are people that yeah consciously conceive even I was reading this after her birth about like the thoughts, like what, what were the thoughts of your parents when they were conceiving you? You know, like were they thinking positive things or negative things? Were they, yeah, and that, that's really an interesting concept to me too. Like not even just when they find out you're pregnant, but when, when you were literally being conceived. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Um, were you tracking your cycle when you were, when it, it was a surprise? Much, no. no okay no okay. no i used to be in birth control and then mm -hmm. that was the, that was years ago that i got off of that oh, like okay. when i was younger because the dermatologist put me on it because mm -hmm. of my skin oh. yeah um and so i was kind of irregular for a while and then yeah right that evened out um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just asked painful? a tricky question, but um, what is the, what, did you ever check really what is the, the real number on the other side of like mothers really having or losing children during a natural birth or like um, having a death birth? It's not many. Not many? It's not many, no. I don't know the exact mm -hmm. numbers. Um, I believe, yeah, there was a midwife in Bali, I read a book of hers that like I don't think she had any infant death, mm -hmm. and the breastfeeding rate was 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's the story that they tell to do the C-section, put the fear, no? So mm -hmm. it would be interesting to know what is really... The I just met one woman that wanted to have natural birth, but she ended up needing to go to the hospital. I don't know why anymore, but she felt like she There's needed some, to go. Yeah. Uh -huh. so there's sometimes that they say that the woman needs to, but they really don't, mm -hmm. or there's sometimes that the fear is so much that the woman wants yeah. to, and... Also, just the lifestyle that we are so far from being aligned with nature that sometimes, yeah, probably is necessary mm -hmm. because they're not healthy and so they need more intervention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, um, was it painful? Or like how painful was it? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I felt it was quite intense, honestly, but I think that was when I was not present with my breath. Mm -hmm. I think breath work would be a huge, like this is so related to breath work, mm -hmm. would be huge. Like if I was pregnant again, I would be doing breath work every day. And then I feel like I could literally have an ecstatic birth, but I didn't mm -hmm. know like, yeah, the sooner you prepare, the better, like mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. And even if it's painful, it's just, I mean, it's mental, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also temporary mm -hmm. it's less than a day mm -hmm. so I felt I can get through any of this and yeah. then when I did I was like okay I can do anything like it yeah. was quite intense for me but um yeah everyone's different yeah yeah mm -hmm. did it ever feel orgasmic but then like in between like the pain or was it mm -hmm. I, can't, I don't yeah <laughs> <laughs> It was like a, just a, like a, an experience I've never felt, like a sensation I've never felt, yeah. you know? Did yeah. it feel psychedelic? Or did you feel yes, like, oh, wow. I felt like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt 
kind of thing. I maybe. felt, I had the thought during it, why do people take ayahuasca when they can just, like, they don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Natural. Really that they don't need but, the stinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you ever feel, yeah. I, heard some, I think it was that teenager girl, she uh -huh. said that whenever they conceived, they felt the, sp the spirit, like, and she was like, oh, it's a, masculine energy and they uh, knew it was a boy before it was he was even uh -huh, born yeah they did did uh -huh. you ever feel like you're like oh it's the feminine energy no actually i thought i felt um a calm protective energy uh -huh. i thought she was a new boy yeah and then everyone was telling me it's nino 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 yeah. so yeah the first three months i had like kind of boyish clothes <laughs> even this i was like a gender neutral like my mom yeah. bought this for her <laughs> i was like i think i'm gonna have a boy <laughs> yeah i've read that many women have even before cons even before being impregnated already feeling the soul of a child yeah, enter their being. She knows the name already and she's like, I feel his presence. And yeah. 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 My aunt also felt like very yeah. clear, like that, that's going to be this name and that name, but she, she really felt the soul entering her mm. after yeah. pregnancy. But even doing, like they said, there are some spaces like a sacred space, like wells, like holy wells or like sacred waters uh -huh. that are known around the world where people go to, to attract souls also and uh -huh. kind of go there and can already take it now and like mm -hmm. to take a soul and already mm. have a soul waiting to to spawn inside of you wow. as a woman i think that like we chose each other yeah and also i was like i felt okay why don't i know her gender 100 percent? like i thought oh am i not connected to her but mm. also just knowing like pregnancy and birth it's like just surrender to it why do we have to control everything and like mm -hmm. giving into that and then it was like just a huge surprise, you mm -hmm. know? It was like I had no idea. And mm -hmm. that happened to my friend just right a baby a month ago that mm -hmm. she also thought it's a boy. Like mm -hmm. everyone's telling her it's a boy. She even went to a midwife that is a local in Bukavamba who's like 80 years old, who's famous for telling the gender by the pulse. And she told me she's gonna be a girl. She's like right 99% of the time apparently, mm -hmm. but I think she's like, She's 80, so she might be losing. <laughs> she told um, she told my friend it's a boy, so she was they're all presenting for a boy, and it's a girl. And so I think just yeah, yeah, like allowing it to be what it is, and yeah. Maybe it's going to be a tomboy. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More of a masculine energy yeah, yeah. in mm. a girl. Mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. with uh, Tina and Simon's birth, they were mm. raw vegan, but you said that the baby was skinny? Yeah, so when I met the baby, again, it's like I felt he was healthy and very yeah. aware and like, but I thought, oh, he's a bit small. Uh -huh. And when they had the second baby, they also said, yeah, he was much smaller than the girl that they have now, and that's because of they're eating more seaweed and iodine and B12. Okay. Mm. So I guess they did a lot of research on B12 okay. and iodine. Iodine, there was the other one, yeah. Iodine. Yeah, and so I was eating seaweed during the pregnancy too, and sea moss. Okay. But now I don't have a good source for sea moss, so... How big yeah. was uh, she when she came out? About six pounds. Six so. pounds, that's pretty common. Yeah. Isn't yeah, I mean the normal is like 5.3 yeah. pounds to 10, but again the normal is Western. Mm. Yes. People who are eating yes. a lot of meat, yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah, my friend thought she was very small because they had huge, they're very tall, mm -hmm. European, like from Denmark, mm -hmm. and <laughs> they had like a 10 pound baby, and so when she delivered my baby, she was like, oh, <laughs> 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 I was like, no, it was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. Yeah. yeah, as long as she's healthy, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also, yeah, like if you have a huge baby and you're eating a lot of junk, you might tear and like all mm -hmm. of these different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So which position did you have? Oh yeah. I was um, squatting with the hands in hammock. Oh. Yeah. And that's just like what felt comfortable for you yeah. at that time? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like I needed something to grab onto. Yeah. So a lot of people have like ropes. I had a friend had a birth ball, like mm. a exercise ball yeah. that she was bouncing on and then she gave birth like on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things. Yeah. Mm. Standing I've heard in tubs and yeah. the shower. Hands and knees. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. 
through the yeah. like the Buddha, he was actually born under a tree and his mother like was just holding on to a tree branch. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that might be nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't know but if that would have the He was born under strength. a tree, he became enlightened under a tree, and he died under a tree. Mm. <laughs> so like the tree is very strong mm. symbol and like the the Bodhi tree? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the, was the placenta? Has like the tree of life mm-hmm. on it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really mm-hmm. cool. So what does the placenta like look like? I'm always... Like an organ, like a big organ. It's pretty it's big. Sack. Oh, yeah. interesting. Like I thought it was like a clear, yeah. like it's liquid red. for some reason. It's <laughs> purple, red. Huh. Like a jellyfish thing. Like a, yeah. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I have two friends that recently gave birth at the Lotus Birth too, and they um, did a print of the placenta on a drum, so they can always see <laughs> the placenta. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. Lotus Birth. Yeah. Yeah. Lotus Birth. I think it's needing some of the Lotus Birth is that you don't cut the cord until it actually comes off. Right. Ah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's different, like, people might think of it differently. Like, some people say lotus birth is that the baby comes out, and then they wait for the person to come out, then they cut the cord and lotus birth. Mm-hmm. But full lotus birth, and you don't cut it at all. Yeah. But I would say, yeah, lotus birth, and you don't cut it at all. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-